Welcome to the Black Bibliophile Podcast. The Black Bibliophile is a podcast where I, Jazz, read and talk about popular and little known books, comics, zines, and authors. To quote Haruki Murakami, if you only read the books that everyone else is reading, you can only think what everyone else is thinking. And with that, let's start the show. Welcome back to the Black Bibliophile Podcast. It's me, your host, Jazz, and welcome back to this new format that we're trying out now. Um, if you guys have any questions, concerns, or just don't like this new format, you can email me at the Black Bibliophile Podcast at gmail.com. And, or you can just leave a comment on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to podcasts. I believe there's comment options on other places I'm not sure anywho this week's book or this episode's book is going to be Harley Quinn Breaking Glass by Mariko Tamaki and Stephen Pooh I think it's Pooh or Pug or I'm gonna go Poog Poog that sounds good and this book comes out September 3rd of this year And it is a comic book or a graphic novel. It's a part of DC's new line of YA books called DC Inc. But I believe DC Inc. has been absorbed into the other titles. So DC Inc. is the former young adult title from DC Comics. It's a little complicated. After DC... um, what's the word I'm looking for? Retired Vertigo Comics, their imprint. They also kind of renamed and recategorized all their YA comics and other comics into three, um, I believe three different categories. So it's now DC Kids, DC and DC Black Label. So now these DC Ink books, which has Mira, and the new Raven book included in them now fall under just DC and DC graphic novel young adult which is like a mouthful but that is what it's called and all the previously announced DC Inc. books slash DC young adult books will still be coming out as agreed upon uh thought of as organized as whatever the word I'm looking for, they're still going to come out. It's just DC does what comics does and renames and reshifts everything to kind of confuse everybody when really nothing's really changed and all the books are just going to come out or whatever. So for the help for the, so to keep my sanity and to make sure this podcast makes any kind of sense whatsoever, We're just going to call the imprint right now DC Inc. Because I believe that's what they're still being called until 2020 when they will all be shifted over to just DC graphic novel for young graphic novels for young adults, which I think DC Inc. has a better has a better ring to it. But, you know, I'm not in charge there. I don't know what's going on. Comics is a fake business. If you didn't know, go ask somebody. I could give you a whole list about that, but that's not what this podcast is about. So anyways, back to Harley Quinn, Breaking Glass, written by Mariko Tamaki, with art by Steve Poe, or Poog. I'm going to say Poog, and art by Steve Poog. Let's read the back for a lovely summary and then get into my review of this book. With just $5 and a knapsack to her name, 15-year-old Harleen Quinzel is sent to live in Gotham City. She's not worried, though. She's battled a lot of hard situations as a kid and knows her determination and outspokenness will carry her through life in the most dangerous city in the world. And when Gotham's finest drag queen, Mama, takes her in, it seems like Harley has finally found a place to grow into her most true true, with new best friend Ivy at Gotham High. But when Mama's drag cabaret becomes the next victim in the wave of gentrification that's taking over the neighborhood, Harley gets mad. She decides to turn her anger into action and is faced with two choices. Join activist Ivy, who's campaigning to make the neighborhood a better place to live, or join her anarchist friend, Joker, 
who plans to take down Gotham one corporation at a time. From Eisner Award and Caldecott honor-winning author Mariko Tamaki and Eisner Award-nominated artist Steve Pugo, Pug comes a coming-of-age story about choices, consequences, and how a weird kid from Gotham goes about defending her world for herself. So again, this book comes out September 3rd, 2019. And I did receive this book to read from Cellar Door Books in Riverside, California. You should definitely check that shop out. I am one of the chosen few readers for Cellar Door Books who reads the mountain of advanced reader copies Linda, the owner, gets and helps her choose which books to buy for the shop for the future seasons. So that is how I got my hands on this book. And I decided it's good. I liked it or I felt like talking about it. So let's just, you know, do an episode about it. I think it'd be fun. So let's hop in. If you don't know who Harley Quinn is, um, or if you do not know about DC comics or DC characters, Harley Quinn, her character debuted in Batman, the animated series. And she at first was like a bit character to the Jokers, one of his many um, jokey henchmen. And then she eventually gained popularity and gained a voice and following of her own. And she's the first DC character, I believe, to go from TV to the comics. So she originated on that TV show. If anybody else says different, they don't know what they're talking about just saying that because I did have dudes tell me that that's not true but it is she premiered and was originated for the Batman animated series and then she was so popular they decided to bring her into the comics as you know Joker's love interest slash um joking fiend person and eventually she separated herself from Joker in that toxic relationship and became her own person these DC ink books though take place Take all these favorite characters like Mira from Aquaman, Raven from the Teen Titans, Beast Boy, Batgirl, and Harley Quinn and put them in their teenage years. And you kind of get to follow them in high school and all of that, which is an interesting concept. And they tapped Mariko Tamaki, who's one of my favorite writers. She's written that one summer, this one summer, this one summer, um, Lord Dean keeps breaking up with me and skim. And if you want to read some good writing, check out some of her books. I'm obsessed and I will gladly review more of her books if you guys would like. But let's hop into Harley Quinn. So this book opens with Harley being sent off to Gotham to stay with her grandmother. She's being sent off there because her mom found a new job to work on a cruise line and she can't bring Harleen, Harleen with her to, um, to be on the ship. So she's like, okay, I'm going to send you to your grandma and you can stay there, go to Gotham High and do what you got to do. And then we'll meet up later for the summer. So Harleen is put on a bus, dropped off in Gotham City, goes to her grandma's place and realizes that her grandma passed away and instead she finds mama the drag queen extraordinaire who owns a drag queen club below the apartment living there and tells Harleen that her grandma passed and she's like oh no I have nowhere to go nowhere to stay and mama agrees to let Harleen stay with her and as long as she you know is good and all of that (laughs) and goes to high school so Harleen, I love the way Mariko writes Harley. I, it's like, you can hear it. You can hear Harley's voice throughout this whole thing. The bubbly, fun, giggly, weird, um, kind of trails off, but also kind of brilliant Harleen. I enjoyed it so much. Reading Harley, Harley Quinn Breaking Glass is fun it's actually like some of the most fun I've had in a while because you feel like you're in Harley's brain you feel like you're reading a diary entry of her life that she's telling you and her strange quirky voice and her weird trail on sentences and just the way she sees 
the world. And I think it's super fun and really, really interesting. So I guess Harleen in the book, Harley kind of alludes to a lot of fairy tales and tries to keep telling the reader, this is not a fairy tale. Life would be easier if it was a fairy tale, but sadly this one ain't it. And she kind of goes through trying to allude to all these different tales like Alice in Wonderland, The Sleeping Beauty, Snow White, uh, Cinderella, until we realize this is just a tale about Harley. She doesn't need a prince to save her. She doesn't need anyone to save her. She is fully capable of saving herself and handling whatever comes her way. So in the story, Harleen goes to Gotham High School, which is full of rich kids and poor kids and all all kinds of kids. And she meets Ivy, who is a, a girl who's highly involved in politics, her school's politics and righting wrongs. And is also deeply involved in the community and especially her community garden wink wink to those of you who know who ivy is aka poison ivy but we don't hear or see a lot of her i mean we don't see a lot of that side of her in this book we just see ivy's love of the community garden and her family and her community and ivy is the first one to really point out the gentrification that's happening in their neighborhood and especially so this large corporation called kane corporation is coming into uh, the neighborhood where Harley and Ivy live and trying to put up condos and coffee chains and to gentrify the entire area and move out the people who are already living there and up pricing and pricing them out. So this book is a commentary on gentrification and how America kind of serves the corporations and could give who could care less about the communities that suffer because of corporations coming in and pushing up prices of leases and rents and taking over buildings and displacing people from their homes. So this book is a huge commentary on that. And Harley arrives and she's basically found home. She feels comfortable and taken in by mama and all the drag queens at the drag club. She loves where she lives. She loves her school and her and Ivy become best friends. And then all of a sudden, they are faced mama's drag club and ivy's parents community garden are faced with this oncoming site of condos and school a new school and all that thrown into their neighborhood and basically the canes come and tell mama that she that he has to shut down his drag club and move out because they're gonna build condos there instead or like a Starbucks or cane coffee, I think it's called. And Harley, not understanding what's going on, is like, how do I stop this? How do I help this? And she's learning from Ivy that she can protest, that she that she can do something, that she can act on this injustice. Now, the way Harley deals with injustices isn't quite... Um, isn't quite isn't is not the right way to go about it i don't recommend to you know do harley's brand of justice but i like the way mariko shows that you know what some people are good some people are bad and harley's like i'm gonna just do what i feel is right i like making things go boom so we're gonna do that so then it kind of flashbacks back and forth between harley's troubled past and her run-ins with the law and how she gets justice for like her mom's van gets stolen and then her mom can't go to work and ends up getting fired. And then the kid who stole the van, his dad knew the guy who owned the burger joint that her mom was waitressing at. So the dad made his friend fire Harley's mom. And, you know, Harley was like, OK, I'm gonna go get my van back. And she, you know, beats the crap out of this kid, goes to the house and be like, give me my van. And, you know, they call the cops or whatever. And then she comes back again. And she, you know, dells out some Harley Quinn brand justice. That's all I'm going to say about that. It just, it just kind of shows that, you know, some people are born this way. (laughs) Is the best way to put it. Harley has always been Harley and always will be Harley. And it's charming. Mariko writes it like charming, but also terrifying, if that makes sense. Like, you're like, I get it. 
I get why she did what she did, but also, oh my God, she is like 15 and in these flashbacks, she has to be like 11 or something. And oh my gosh, charming, but dangerous. So I dig that viewpoint of Harley Quinn and I like the way Mariko writes her because you're like, okay, she cares about her family. She cares about the people around her and she might be a little unhinged, but there's, um, there's goodness in her heart and why she's doing these things. I want to talk about a little bit Steve Poog. I just, I'm so sorry, Steve Poog. If you're listening to this, I'm probably butchering your name and I'm very sorry, but Steve Poog's art is amazing. It is beautiful. And at first I'm not used to, I'm, I read a lot of comics that are more cartoon style, like the it's more based in the cartoonist style so it's whether it's super simplified or it's very unique or it has its own line weights or what have you Steve Poog's style is super realistic and dynamic and interesting I love the way he does the Joker's mask like he does it in a way where it's like a plastic bag wrapped over his face and it's glued onto it as like magazine clippings. It's unsettling, but it also very much reads Joker, if that makes sense. It's very unhinged and um, visceral. And his art style holds on to that visceralness and that, and that feeling. You can feel the movement on the page. You can almost feel the heat coming off from certain explosions you can feel the anguish in the character's faces you can see when mama's told that he's going to have to move out of the drag and close down the drag club his heartbreak you can see him shutting down you can see all of that and steve's artwork is fantastic and it's perfect for a perfect pairing for mariko's words and harley's face harley's sad but also excited and almost um what's the word it's not manic it might be manic her manic happiness it's just written all over her face and you're like oh she's charming and adorable and she just wants to help but also you can tell she's a little bit unhinged and you might want to you know be careful and tread lightly and I also like I don't know whose idea this was it might be Mariko's it might have been Steve's but in the book I feel like the only white people in the book are bad people, despite, like, except for Harley. And I mean, like, the Canes are white, the wealthy white people who are trying to gentrify the area of this neighborhood. Mama in the book is an Asian male. All the drag queen are multiracial. Ivy, I believe, is half black, half Asian, which is a cool way to um, have Ivy depicted because usually she's white like most DC characters and most superheroes and villains are white and I thought it was really interesting to make Ivy a black girl and make and make that stand out like her hair texture it kind of looks like it's curly loose curls kind of like vines or spiral leaves if that makes sense she looks like she belongs amongst nature is what I'm getting at and I just can't get over how good the story is in this book Mariko does a great job at not only balancing um Harley's unhingedness her storytelling her kind of word vomit she kind of thinks in hot dogs and candy bars but she also balances that with a real heart like there's a real heart to who Harley is and how Harley experiences things and it's very cool I enjoyed it a lot and Harley is one of my favorite characters in the DC universe. I love her and Poison Ivy's relationship and yeah I think it's really something that her voice that Marika was able to translate her voice into writing so perfectly and also be able to capture that teenage frustration like I'm too young to be able to do things or just that frustration of feeling 16 and not able to change the world immediately I like the way that she captured that and then Steve's art just highlights it so much more the realism the movement and just the visceralness of how everybody's faces look it's realistic and also 
and also not at the same time. It's very cool. And I think if you guys have, you know, a library card or can download Hoopla or Libby, you should definitely, definitely check out Harley Quinn Breaking Glass written by Mariko Tamaki with art by Steve Poog. I think you won't regret it. I think it's amazing. And yeah, it comes out September 3rd to all bookstores, your local indie bookshops and comic shops. So if you want them to order it, you should definitely tell them now. They could probably get it in for you before the date comes in or at least a little bit after. Please support your indie bookshops and indie comic shops. There was up. And yeah, that's my review for Harley Quinn Breaking Glass. Um, from DC Inc, aka DC Graphic Novels for Young Adults, aka DC, um, aka I don't know which one it is because DC is gonna probably change it in two months. So, you know, just look for it. It's a young adult book. You can't miss it. And yeah, if you guys like this episode of the podcast, and if you have any questions, concerns, recommendations for something for me to read, you can email me at theblackbibliophile at gmail.com. I also have a Patreon where you guys can um, become patrons and you can receive early episodes. I write essays. There's a book club, but I think I'm only going to start the book club up when I have at least four people as patrons. Right now I have two. So if you guys join the patreon patreon i can actually start up the book club and i have some really cool books we can all read together and talk about i'd have questions we can do live um answers and stuff like that it'd be really fun so if you want to be a part of that life you can join on my patreon all the info to every book and everything i've mentioned below including the article that explains all the dc imprint madness will be in the notes below and yeah thank you guys for sticking around for this week's episode it's been great and i can't wait to read more books and talk to you guys about them all right 